Ms. Judika Ramanagan, President of CRF, members of the CRF Executive Committee, delegates, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. I'm very happy to be here this morning to join you at the seventh conference of the Corporate Registers Forum. First, I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to all our overseas delegates. This is the second time that Singapore is hosting the CRF conference, and we thank you for this honour and privilege. The CRF conference has made significant strides in just a short period of time. The first conference held in 2003 saw the participation of just 13 jurisdictions. Today, we have here with us some 150 delegates representing 40 jurisdictions. The conference has enjoyed growing support as it provides a useful platform for CRF members to connect with counterparts from around the world who share a common goal of reforming business registration and transforming the business register. I was told that both members and non-members have found it valuable in coming together regularly to share ideas, compare notes and learn from each other's experiences. The theme for this year's conference is crossing boundaries, building relationships. This topic is particularly apt in this era of what some have coined as Government 2.0, which coincides with rising public expectation on the delivery of government services. In a Government 2.0 environment, governments are expected to make greater use of technology, especially Web 2.0 and social networking technology, to connect with and improve the delivery of services to citizens and businesses. Increasingly, the expectation is that Government agencies should go beyond improving just their own work processes to working with other government agencies to streamline work flow for the government as a whole. Citizens and businesses expect not just hassle-free transactions with individual government agencies, but they also want to see a greater link-up among government agencies so that it will be easier and more convenient for them to deal with multiple agencies. The public also expects government agencies to shift from what is essentially a government to us mindset, which is largely one directional, to a government with us mindset, which is bi-directional. They expect to see greater partnership between the government and the public. Specifically in terms of access to data, they expect government agencies to open up and make available more data to the public to facilitate their participation in policy formulation and the creation of value-added services. To meet these expectations, government agencies need to collaborate better with one another and collaborate better with the public in the delivery of services. Greater collaboration means government agencies will have to be adept at crossing boundaries and building relationships, hence the relevance of the theme of today's conference. But specifically, what does operating in the government 2.0 environment mean for business registries? For ACRA, which oversees the registry of companies and businesses in Singapore, it means paying much more attention to working with other government agencies to improve the experience of businesses with government as a whole. One good example is the Unique Entity Number Project, which was a multi-agency project co-led by ACRA and the Ministry of Finance. Prior to 2009, every government agency would issue its own registration number to businesses that deal with them. A business can end up with as many as 20 different registration numbers to interact with different government agencies. In 2006, we embarked on the UEN project, which took three years to complete. It was quite a massive effort exercise to get 84 government agencies to come together and to agree to set up a new central system to streamline the issuance and administration of a unique identification number for every registered entity which cover all businesses, companies, societies, charities, embassies, among others. As you can well imagine, it is not an easy task to get 84 government agencies to come together to implement a project, especially one that require agencies to drop their own registration numbers, to adopt new numbers, change their work processes, and put in place new systems. Many boundary issues have to be addressed, and having good working relationship among the agencies was critical to the success of the project. It was a lot of hard work, but the outcome was well worth the effort. When the project was completed, for the registered entities, it meant that they only need to use one registration number to transact with all 84 government agencies. For the government, it has also allowed us to further simplify and integrate processes across the agencies. 
For example, traders used to have to wait a few days to apply for a registration number with Singapore Customs before they can start trading. But with the adoption of a unique entity number, traders can now immediately commence trading using their unique registration number obtained at the point of business registration. Another example, at the height of the financial crisis, the government introduced a jobs credit scheme which essentially provided payroll support to companies to provide to preserve jobs. The scheme would require us to match records of the companies kept by different agencies. With unique registration numbers, the matching of records was very straightforward and we were able to push out the scheme without any delay. In the area of business reporting, ACRA had successfully implemented the filing of corporate financial statements by companies in XBRL format in 2007. Now, ACRA is looking at what businesses need to report to other government agencies. We want to see if we could further harmonise and streamline the, report, the reporting of business data by businesses. The ongoing project, called Standard Business Information Reporting, will examine what businesses are currently reporting to various government agencies, the types of data being reported, and the timelines for reporting to see if we could avoid duplication of filings and to see whether there's room to harmonize data definition for consistency and comparability. The idea is this. If a business has to supply the same data to more than one government agency, we want the data to be entered only once by the business but shared and used many times by different government agencies. The aim is to reduce the regulatory burden on businesses as much as possible. In terms of making more data accessible to the public, one of ACRA's more recent initiatives was making available financial information in XBRL filed to ACRA. XBRL format reporting meant that previously static business information can now be easily exploited to provide useful insights to investors and businesses. In January 2010, ACRA collaborated with a private sector firm to launch an XBRL-enabled interactive financial analysis tool called Open Analytics. The tool provides comparative financial information using simple and user-friendly interfaces. The collaboration was a success and the tool was very well received by the business community. ACRA will continue to look for ways to see how you can make available more of its data to support the creation of value-adding services especially in collaboration with other agencies and stakeholders. For example, we have a national initiative to promote the sharing and use of geospatial or map-based data with the public. The value of such map-based data can be significantly enhanced if it can be combined with other data sets such as business data. To illustrate, if an entrepreneur is thinking of setting up a business at a particular location, it would be very useful if you could call up information on similar businesses or supporting businesses that are already established in the vicinity of his chosen location. Better still, if you could also obtain the financials of his potential business drivers nearby. That could greatly help him in his business decisions. ACRA was approached to see if they could provide data on business locations and their financials. Unfortunately, ACRA was unable to supply this information as it only collects the address of the registered office and not the places where actual business is carried out. The question that arises is whether ACRA should start collecting such data on business location as an additional reporting requirement. For the businesses, this could be seen as an increase in regulatory compliance. From ACRA's viewpoint, collecting business location is also not its core work. But could an argument be made that if the collection costs and reporting burden is not high, perhaps ACRA could take on this additional role if it could add significant value to existing data sets or if it allows greater value to be unlocked. There's no easy answer. It requires careful weighing of the costs and benefits. But operating in a government 2.0 environment means we have to be prepared to look at issues not just from the agency's own perspective, we have to be prepared to look beyond our own immediate boundaries and consider what is best at the whole of government level and at the national level. The rise of an increasingly internet savvy, Facebook savvy and Twitter savvy generation has raised public's expectations significantly. This has opened up new, opportunity, new challenges for governments 
But new technologies also offer us opportunities to do things differently in reaching out to the public and opportunities to create new value. I'm sure in the course of the conference, you will learn much from each other's experience in addressing the specific challenges that you face and your response to these challenges. I've been told by my colleagues in Accra that the CRF conferences have been known as the birthplace of many ideas. And I hope that the CRF 2011 conference will live up to this ex uh, reputation. Let me conclude by wishing everyone a very fruitful time at the conference and an enjoyable stay in Singapore. Thank you very much.